microwave transformers, and these are uh, the, the last two out of the uh, microwaves that I had stacked up over there. And so I've got three of these now, and they're going to go into high tension supplies for valve gear when I start doing uh, some valve uh, type equipment. I'm hoping to do a valve CW transmitter. But we had a cleanup day coming, so we needed to get ourselves sorted out. And uh, while I was removing, excuse the middle finger. While I was removing them, uh, I managed to like rip half my finger apart, so that was fun. Probably you can see this giant dent in my head. I've been working with the binoculars because I'm old and I'm blind. Just got back from a lovely trip, long weekend. I had a Friday off because we got a day in lieu from work, which was fantastic. And the King's birthday Monday as well, so four days. We went off to Berrima, had a fantastic time. Of course, took my home brew, Drew Diamond volumes, um, handbooks for the radio amateur. Volumes 1 to 4, link in the hand playlist below uh, for a review of those fantastic books and I, I saw a great uh, transmitter. So plans may have changed now, I'm thinking I might actually take my uh, DDS BFO with the analog scale. I'm going to try and build um, either a double sideband voice transmitter so that I can do a totally homebrew voice transmission on 80 meters. I've managed to do that with CW, but I haven't done it with voice yet. And or do a four band uh, transmitter um, for CW. Let's get on with the, uh, the rest of this video. And in today's video, we're gonna build a Chinese clone of the rock mine. So we have committed a neatness on the bench, untangled cables, because I scared we were gonna start a fire in the shack. And I have decided that uh, I'd like to do something easy. So this is, uh, I think it's a Chinese copy of the uh, 49er. It's a 7 meg transceiver. And I'm hoping that uh, this all goes together nicely. And the plan is, the dastardly plan, is to build this. It's a rock uh, or crystal locked rig. So what I'll do is, we'll get this little 49, this is a Super RM, um, originally SWL, formerly known as the Rockmite. So this is a Rockmite, I think it's all, they're all very similar. So let's say this is the Rockmite. We are going to turn this into the transceiver that uh, it's hopefully going to become. And then I have bought myself a little piece of QRP Labs technology called uh, the Prog Rock 2, which is a... It's kind of like a, a um, well, it's not kind of like, it is a programmable crystal. So you can program different frequencies into it. And the plan is to program in transmit frequencies. And if the offset is not very good on this thing, I'll probably trans, uh, transmit on one frequency and flick it over to create the offset on the other channel. So I'll have pairs of frequencies for transmit and receive. And that'll give me, for pairs, up to seven uh, sorry, up to eight pairs of uh, frequencies. So I'll have eight channels I can transmit or receive on using that unit. So this video is going to be get this built, get it plugged into an antenna, and uh, maybe do a QSO just on the frequency that we have, um, which is, I think, down the bottom of the 40-meter uh, the band. And then we'll uh, have a crack at programming various frequencies into that prog rock getting that prog rock into a, uh, a steel case. I'll actually show you that case. We've got so many kits on the fly, so many things happening, and I'm just sort of in, in the situation now where I don't know what I want to build and what I don't want to build. This is the prog rock. Now, in a way, I wish I had ordered myself more than just the one, but you can actually fit it inside a crystal case. It's that small. And uh, what I'm going to do is, this is going to go inside this die cast metal case that I got from uh, JCAR. We'll, we'll pop it in there. We'll have a switch on the front to switch between the three banks of crystals. One of them I'll have um, labeled as well, have them labeled as one, two, and three, because there's three banks coinciding with the three clocks of the SI 51, uh, 50, 5351 A chip, clock chip that's used in a lot of DDS uh, type VFOs or synthesized VFOs, if you want to be more precise. And this is going to switch between those and you will have a bank of three switches to select which frequency you want using the binary address. Now, that all sounds really complex. Don't worry about it. 
that's going to be another uh, video and I'll explain all of that to you. But this video is going to be all about building this uh, kit. This kit was kindly given to me by my mate, uh, VK2 NAP Chris, CW Chris. Um, so uh, we will see whether we can get that on air and whether it, uh, whether it uh, is capable of um, getting me a QSO. It actually comes with instructions. I'm actually quite surprised. So we will, and a schematic as well. So we'll get this all together and we'll see if it uh, actually does anything. Okay, uh, how hard can it be? I'm hoping I can knock this over in a couple of easy nights. That says uh, in Chinese, this will be really crappy. Maybe not. Let's hope. Hey, these things are quite often a bit of a novelty, but if you can get a QSO out of it, it means the rig has lived and it succeeded. And then you play around and see if you can make it a little bit less woeful. Okay, let's go. And this is the Solder Smoke podcast YouTube channel, but the podcasts are absolutely amazing. If you're home brewing and you want to listen to some fantastic uh, discussions about home brewing, this is the place to go. I'll, uh, I'll put a link below to uh, both the podcast and the YouTube channel because it's just awesome. It's just really fantastic stuff. Lucky it comes with really clear instructions. Welding a MOS tube should disconnect the iron power using waste heat of welding. Should check after turn on the juice and insert the headset can hear the white noise. The antenna terminal connected to make a holiday. 51 ohms resistor load and access keying. Testing the machine current. Thank God um, this is all written so concisely. Uh, we're going to pop all our parts on this electrostatic bag here. Uh, I don't own an electrostatic wristband. And up until now, there it is there. That's the component they were talking about uh, being electrostatically sensitive. It's been in this plastic bag for 100 years. I might be completely wasting my time even building this damn thing, but uh, hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained. A lot of this stuff, uh, you know, isn't as electrostatically sensitive as a lot of the time they make out it is. Let's um, hope and pray that uh, it isn't screwed. Now, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this because I've done no surface mount. So this is my first foray into surface mount. I'm going to have to get myself a pair of tweezers, probably from the bathroom. I think I might try and get that component on the board before any of the other components because I figure that's the one I'm going to have the most trouble with. So what I'm going to try and do is the method is put a bit of solder on one of these pins or probably a couple each corner and once it's sitting down on the board and tack it down. So I'm, 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 um, I'm hoping that works out okay. Uh, fingers crossed. Okay folks, bit of a progress report. All jokes aside about the instructions, the to date I haven't done what I should do which is go through the whole kit, check that I've got everything. I did make sure I had the actual chips that I need. Uh, all the rest, I'm sure if there's anything missing, I'll be able to get anyway. They're not the hardest components to find. But I did want to, uh, to make a start on it. And this diagram that's given with the kit and also the actual printed circuit board is really well screen printed. And between the information that's on the actual circuit board and the information that is here, along with uh, descriptions of parts and whatnot, you know, aside from the occasional K turning into a Chinese character and whatnot, uh, this is all very, very readable. And I'm about one third of the way through the, uh, the circuit board, you can see there. And I've done my surface mount component and I have actually metered it to where it meets uh, various other parts of the circuit board and put a probe right at the uh, where the leg joins the actual case. But I shall find out once I get all these parts in here. I'm assuming that uh, the microcontroller is already loaded up. But if that's not the case, that will be the next interesting situation. But as there's no actual way of getting something into this thing, I'm assuming that is the actual case, that there'll be firmware loaded. The plan is to have the crystals such that I can plug them in and out. I'll need to get something to do to make that happen and keep them firmly in place on the board. So that, uh, like I said later on, I can try using the prog rock. Now, 
This has two crystals, one for receive and one for transmit, both on the same frequency. I am hoping that I can actually take one clock and feed it in here and another clock and feed it in here. Hi folks, this is that time in the video where I'm going to ask you to uh, reach down and hit the subscribe if you feel like it and uh, the like or the dislike button. Um, as you can see, uh, my little friend here in the painting still hasn't been completed. So maybe in a future video, you'll get to see that painting complete. Um, at the moment, having way too much fun playing with radio. We've got a QRP transceiver going. I've done my first surface mount component and uh, we're setting it up for a few more projects and videos. So uh, if you hit that notify bell, you'll get to watch those videos when they come up. 7-3 and we'll go back to the video. It's finished and it's ready to go. It is close to 11 p.m. It's getting very late. I don't want to make too much noise because there's people sleeping next door. But we've tried to get this thing going. As luck would have it, uh, as soon as I got it going, it's supposed to give me four watts. It's actually giving me about uh, two watts um, with the transistor that's required. But of course, that transistor blew up in quick, uh, quick order. Don't have an equivalent type. I've chucked in a BD139 for the time being. Trusty BD139, I didn't expect that to survive. It's a much lower power um, rating. But uh, it's surviving, it's just not giving me as much power. Presently, we'll just, uh, I'll just zoom you in and you can have a look at... Uh, I'll let you listen to the side tone on the, uh, the TS520. And as you can see there, the light goes from green to... Uh, to red bottom scale they go zero to five and we're getting ourselves about um, 350 milliwatts so it's qrpp at the moment uh, i may very well get uh, the correct transistor order a decent one and um, hopefully that one will behave itself um, but uh, i may have even try using this qrpp for a little while see if i can get out on it so we have our rig set up now through our uh, audio filter and the uh, direct not through, um, so you're just listening to the normal response from this receiver. So that's a, a CQ contest, uh, AA, I think it's AA test, um, very hard to hear, but uh, it's a Japanese station, so the receiver's receiving all right, um, that's on the inverted uh, V, and that's uh, switched over on the uh, magic antenna box to uh, my vertical. I'll just show you um, evidence that the key is working as well. If I um, push this button, I think it'll go into, uh, it's in dummy load now. Um, I think it'll go into uh, the CQ mode. And that's into the dummy load. And we won't uh, let it continue doing that because uh, even up into the dummy load, it's actually sending a Chinese call sign. A Chinese call sign for a Chinese kit. So, folks, my verdict on this transmitter thus far is that uh, the kit instructions, the English was absolutely atrocious. And in this day and age with Google Translate and whatnot, there's probably no excuse for that other than the fact that it is cheap and rather nasty, but for 27, 28 bucks, you end up with a transceiver that might be usable at some point in time. Hey, it's it's been a lot of fun. I'm going to set up um, an uh, iambic or a Kia for this, a paddle, and I'm going to use bits from the microwave oven that uh, I've got lying around. So that will be in, in an upcoming video. 
I'm also going to endeavor to get the correct transistor so we can get this thing back up into the watts range rather than the milliwatts range because I have found in the past other than very very local contacts it's very hard to get a decent contact at any sort of uh, reasonable distance till you're up around a watt unless you've got a fantastic antenna system and really low noise both of which I don't have at this location yet so we will persevere it's like I said it's been a lot of fun it's built um, I will be getting that uh, Kia going and then I'm gonna have to learn how to use it and it'll be rough and it'll be ready but it'll be a lot of fun I promise you that so thank you for sticking around to the end of this video please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode of the art of engineering hopefully with this transceiver working and I'll be able to show you a QSO 73